Welcome to Unscripted Gaming. It is that time of year again. It is the Game of the Year podcast. I'm going to be producing this one. I am Ray. Over here giving the horns is... Bike. And, up... and over here giving the yep. shotgun is... Josh, your boy. All right. Game Gentlemen. of the... Who knew that G-O-T-Y all this time stood for Game of the Yeet? Everyone else's Game of the Year list is illegitimate because ours is best, especially Polygon's Game of the Year list. What a dumpster fire that list is. Don't go to it. Please don't. I'm actually. I'm going to it right now because I'm sure it's Please. perfectly fine, and I think no, Ray is it's... probably being dramatic. Um, it's, it's pretty bad. Uh, let's take a. Let's um, put Ray on the spot here. I just want go to ahead. Know go ahead. Game of the year is, is go Mario ahead. Go ahead. Maker. <laughs> well, we're done. <laughs> Pack it, oh. everybody. Let's go home. Uh, yeah, yeah. What was it better than Super Mario World? No. Um, uh, no, it's not. <laughs> um, well, hey, we've got a. Uh, we're here to talk about some games, yeah. and uh, what this looks, this list looks fine. I don't know what the f, f you're talking about, Ray. So, so my problem with polygons. No, I don't want we're, to talk about them for too long. It looks what? fine. Don't. It's. I don't know what the problem. Is. It's 50 games, and if you're going to have a Game of the Year section that's literally 50 games, just put every game that came out that year. Also, a certain game made by a certain company that involves the apocalypse is on their Game of the Year list. I'm like, eh, illegitimate. Gone. It's almost like people are entitled to their opinions. Weird. Your opinions can be wrong. Not I mine, though. It. Mine are always correct. That's the, <laughs> the first rule of this podcast, is that Mike is always correct. Like, and then the second rule know this. is that Josh is more, 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 most correct. Wow. I can be correct, and you can also be more correct. This, these things are not independent. Are not. Uh, it, this boy, is this is boring to work. listen to. I'm going to start talking about games now. Uh, the important thing Actually, is, is that this list is fine. Don't listen to Ray. He's just panicking over nothing as usual. I'm not uh, panicking. All right. Ray, so Ray, how Ray, we're going to do this? Ray, as usual, we've real got. Quick. No, let me. Ray, as usual, will be producing this podcast given his his uh, grandiose stature in the industry. <laughs> Let's be honest here. You know, he, he refrains from some of the some of the more nitty gritty things that Mike and I will be talking about. So he will. He's uh, deep in the pockets of the list making industry. Yeah, he'll he'll be he'll be chiming deep in here in and there with a few superlatives deep. and I thoughts, some honorable mentions, but the real the real meat and potatoes he will be refraining from. And uh, producing this wonderful, wonderful, not mess of a podcast. Mm -hmm. Bam. All right. Well, fam, do you want to dive in here? Let's dive in. Let's dive yep. in. Let's start off with the superlative category, otherwise known as Mike made up a bunch of stuff and has some stuff to talk about. Mike, take it away. I feel very unfairly called out by that, but okay. <laughs> um, but they're literally all the categories first, you made to talk, specifically talk about I it, things you wanted to talk an about. Opportunity to make edits to the categories in the chat, and no one offered up any corrections or changes. You had you had ample time to review this list before we <laughs> recorded this. To we imply that choice. you did not have editorial decision in the creation of this list is simply untrue. Our first category that. tonight is just the most graphics award. We award this game to any game that has to the game that has the most graphics. Uh, you have to have at least five graphics to qualify. Uh, <laughs> what? Wait. But you can't have any more than twenty. Um, and the winner is Bit Trip Runner. I do like the graphics of Bit Trip Runner. I love Bit Trip Runner. But I think it only has four graphics. That's the problem. Ah, damn. Mm. You hate to see that. So close. Um, <laughs> Got that DQ. Disqualified. <laughs> but see, I think I would nominate. I would nominate Red Dead for this award, but because some of those landscapes are incredible. Like it is beautiful. But I just finished some of the main campaign stuff earlier this week and who boy some of those last missions um man ps4 is uh is getting up there 
and you can really see it when Red Dead runs like a slideshow. <laughs> it's uh, too bad you don't have the most powerful console. It's a shame. I don't. I do not have the most powerful. Console. <laughs> or maybe I don't know. You put your game on a PC. I mean, what? they're gonna nobody. Nobody, nobody wants that. that Rockstar. Nobody. Yeah. Just it's nobody. uh so. I like I don't know how to, I I think it's a very gorgeous game like some of, it, it's some of like the best like open world landscapes I think I've ever seen uh, the meticulous like detail in crafting the design is really cool you can definitely tell how long someone's gonna stick around in the story or a mission because they're an ugly character that you can tell they did not spend the mo attention modeling you can tell that that character will not be around for a long time. Um, to that point i don't blame them but uh that game sure has a lot of graphics um i hear good things about this game yeah nothing uh yeah. let's see i think uh josh what do you have any games off the top of your head that you would like to nominate for most graphics so I, I have been going back and forth on this. Um, first off, let me say, I, I don't know that I've actually mentioned this on a podcast yet, but I purchased during the Black Friday mega sale a PlayStation 4. Ooh. So this is this is my first console purchase since 2009. Um, so I did, I did get a PlayStation 4, and I have been playing the Spider-Man being being Mr. Mr. Spider-Man swip swinging around New York and I will say Swipping. the the uh, character design, the city, the move like that is a gorgeous looking game and I very much enjoy just getting lost swinging through that city. It's it's a very very pretty game. Um but there's a part of me that also says that for me Dragon Ball Fighter Z is is my choice for most graphics not not simply because of the fact that that game looks incredible and runs mm -hmm. incredibly but that it looks exactly like the anime on in action on your computer screen it's it's unbelievable what they have done with that game to get it looking the way that it has and I just think that it has to take the most graphics category, in my opinion. I am a. I think that I can definitely compromise on that because I I definitely agree. Like the design, like there have been some ugly ass looking Dragon Ball games in the past, and the like kind of two D three D Arxis style works super well. Like all the moves are pulled right from the show and look exact. Like look. And just it, it's just literally like the best it has ever been translated into any other medium before, and it's I it, I think it is absolutely a great pick for our uh, most graphics category, as it has a, a really unique style, and I think does it super duper well. I would agree with all that. All right, oh. next up, hardest bops. This is for the most Fuego tracks and or music uh, from a game this year. Um, Goodness. Goodness. I think it would be remiss to not mention. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if it went. It might be the winner of this category. They're, well, yes, it is. Um, but we uh, just say it. I want to say I like the music in Red Dead a lot. It's very environmental and good. Oh, I like the music elite. in Into the Breach. It's very like dystopian and good. Oh yeah, it is. But yeah. none of these. I like the music in Dragon Ball Fighters. It's really good fighting and crazy electric guitar fun. You know when your character theme, when your character selection theme is hard, you know your game is good. But none of these other games. Have the most Fuego remix of Gangplank Galleon to ever exist. There's only one game that has this. It is Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. And we are awarding the uh, bop, uh, the hardest bop to the uh, Gangplank Galleon remix. P.S. Just so everybody knows, that was me giving, that, that, was me giving that, that track four slaps 
out of three. So that tells you how hard <laughs> it's That slapped. doesn't disqualify it like the graphics category, right? That's no. different? Okay. That is different. Higher is and better than this one. Okay. Uh, when good. you're playing yeah. Smash Ultimate and you pick K. Rule and that song comes on, boy, that is your theme song. That match is already secured. Already over. That, that the horns coming in. Dun, 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 burn! And then you got the gun ready and you're like, let's go. Also, the the, the slab of the bass on that man, on that main many theme is real good too. Mm-hmm. And then they bring in the vocals as a late mix-up. Oh, you weren't expecting that. Any tracks that can make you erect are, by <laughs> definition, <laughs> the best tracks. Bops. Some would say the hardest bop. Awarded to get it, Gangplay- get it, get. <laughs> Awarded to Gangplay Galleon and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Congratulations, you will receive nothing in the mail. Um. <laughs> My friend online said that uh, Sakurai didn't have to go that hard for K. Rule. He didn't have to make a song for K. Rule. DK already has like 40 songs represented in the game. But, but he, he went did. hard. <laughs> mm. It's... And it's kind of like non-jokingly, it's, it's kind of a shout out to the awesome... The thing I really like about Smash Ultimate is just like the massive like music library it is, which is super cool. Anyways, yeah. c- congratulations to King K. Rule and the gang fight galleon. Uh, next up, we have Fuster Cluck of the Year. And similar to our previous category, mm-hmm. um, it's been a lit year for games. Uh, you've got streamers having heated gaming moments. Yeah. You've got uh, people ball tapping, like execs ball tapping fellow employ- fellow employees and subordinates. In really cool ways, it's great. It's I'm not, sorry, but <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's bad out there, Ray. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. <laughs> I must um, miss some of this. You've got companies being like, "No, yeah, we're we're still open," and then shuttering overnight. Oh. Mo- 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 oh, moments, oh, some might say, almost moments later. Moments uh, later, like, "No, no, yeah, we're good." I would say it's appropriate to see moments later in that case. Yeah. yeah. Uh, shout yeah. out to Telltale for fucking over all their employees. Super cool. Yeah. Normal. Super, super yeah. Great. And shout out to especially the one who sold all of their possessions, moved all the way across the country to California to then be told that the company no longer existed nine days later. Yeah. Um, which, which let's, in... let's just say that was for a long time. The 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 reigning defending Fuster Cluck of the Year champion, if if this was a you know award continuously given throughout the year, but then then somebody came in and and gave a big oh, wait also oh. Rockstar, um yeah. yeah working a lot of working like bragging about how working a hundred hour weeks is super cool and great and. Not shitty and awful labor practices. Not at all. Uh, yeah, so there was a lot of that, and I honestly, like, if there's a lesson to be learned from this category, it's that if you want to win the, the Unscripted Gaming Fuster Cluck of the Year, you have to run through the tape. You, ha- you, have, to, <laughs> Red you Dead, have to be... Like, Rockstar thought they had this in the bag, but... You have to nah, be... They were, to they be were undone. And just like Coca Cola, you, you you can't get in the lead and then take your foot off the gas. You have to keep that shit pressed to the floor for weeks and weeks and weeks and even into the next year. Le- lean into the skid and then keep turning well beyond the point of you gaining control of the car again. You gotta just you gotta keep run through going. the tape. You gotta be committed and. If that hasn't been a big enough clue here, uh, the clear fu- the clear fuster cluck of the year. Honestly, it's like I also feel bad like giving like legitimate labor and harassment issues the fuster cluck because that's more of like justified anger and hopefully positive social movement of the year. Um, mm-hmm. For fuster cluck, the only answer is Fallout seventy six. Yeah, just I yeah, clap that up. <laughs> Congratulations, you guys. Everyone crack a Nuka Cola and then kill yourself. Um, uh, wait, you can't because the nukes aren't there yet. No. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what about the guns? Do the guns still work at least? 
the guns still work, but all the enemies got buffed, so it no! takes more shots. <laughs> um, I mean, at, at least, least there's still like a, exciting quest lines. I have a cool canvas stuff. bag to put all my new Coca Colas in until I can drink them later. It's nylon. Oh God! <laughs> Just so many hilariously singular fuck ups. That it like because like a, a cascade, if you will. Because they're like, I mean, even starting like in the in the announcement for the game, they're like, oh, yeah, this is an online game. Might be a little buggy, guys. You know, you love our bugs. They're so crazy. And then the beta literally had a bug that caused the beta to delete itself. It's just like, oh, what a funny joke. The game just deleted itself. Yes. In that neat. So funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's great stuff. Um, if you go back and rewatch that E3 presentation, um, that presentation has not aged well at all. I'm, like, I'm sure. All See, the things what, that he was saying. What What really sets this apart is it's not only did the Bethesda jank go beyond just the, the normal gameplay. But the Bethesda jank went into their actual marketing, into their implementation, into the company itself. It is it is per, it is spread beyond just the the software into being a culture of jank just throughout the entire organization. And for that, again, the creation and the creation engine has gained sentience. Oh God. It's it's bad, folks. We've lost control. Uh, but yeah, just so uh, there. There are so many fuck ups to choose here. It's just it's it's crazy. It it's it really just an incredible shit show. And for the longest time, I what was, a great you know, bad year it's been. Like what? It, yeah, obviously, you know, it's like great. Which Foster clock do you want to pick? <laughs> Everything's fine. Um. Uh. But yeah, for the longest time, I thought uh, I thought Red Dead had this locked up, but no. You gotta run through the. You got tell the Housers that they gotta run through the tape, yep. man. You Todd Howard's gotta you beat. You can't like, take your foot off the gas. Well, congratulations to Bethesda and uh, Fallout 76 one, one for what? Good job, Todd Howard. You, you really yeah. did it. Have fun patching out those rad roaches. Um. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> okay. That was, that was Our cute. next category is uh one that is actually not a real category because I was going to look up uh my favorite I was going to continue my favorite category of streamer uh um oopsie of the year um cuz streamers have a lot of those. Uh but can honestly, quick, can we real quick just mention how I saw a tweet about um PewDiePie accidentally putting on Nazi regalia during a stream out of anger, and for a minute I thought it was real because I think that little of him and think that that's something that he could actually do. I was, <laughs> I was like, "Oh wait, no, this is this is satire," and it took me yeah. a long time to realize it because I was like, "How did he do this?" And I was like, <laughs> "Honestly, like, I just, you know, I, I want you guys, I want." Our audience know the bot like oh, so mad! Put some Reichstag onto his hat. I just want you guys to know the harm, like the literal emotional harm I took for for you, my co-host, and for our audience to research this category that was ultimately too powerful and dangerous and had to be like Yeah, you really need locked, to stop. It had to be locked away, streamers. like like at the end of uh Raiders of the Lost Ark, like just put in a warehouse. Put away forever. Put the, if, Put these takes in a box so that they may never escape. Um, uh, I'm just going to say that Boogie2998 has some bad freaking tweets, fam. It's got some bad tweets. Oh, I uh, think he has just, some pretty sensible ideas. Uh, sensible yeah. ideas like a silver lining to the Holocaust. I mean, we did learn a lot. You know, there's a lot of scientific research that we wouldn't have if Ooh. it wasn't for that. <laughs> Minor interjection. Mike's not kidding. He actually has like a whole video where he says like the Holocaust had a silver lining to it, and is it, is it, it is hard to playbook? watch. N no, it it's so it's, it's the watch. it's the. Mm, I, I, I see. It's just 
I can't do this to myself. It was just literally like causing me anxiety, like seeing this guy like pop up in my timeline with his like aggressively centrist like crap. And I just I mm. I mm. I, could, I couldn't I, I could it. I couldn't do it. He's just. Mm. It's been a really good year for Boogie. Yeah, it's uh mm. <clears throat> that you know I like I said. We're, there was a whole category about this, and I just like nope, can't do it. It's it's canceled. This category is canceled. Yeah. Moving on. Uh, yeah. Next up, we have the. Um, I, I, one thing. Pause. Uh, Boogie, Boogie. I you know I've I've watched some some like Boogie videos over the years and and kind of followed him a little bit. Boogie's had a rough year. He's been going through a lot of personal stuff, and he's finding the wrong outlet for what he's going through by these aggressively centrist ideas. Find a different outlet. That's all I'll say. Yeah. It's good. Right. Good, That's uh, actually good very luck. mature of you, Josh. Next category, fuck boogie. Um, <laughs> and then Mike! <laughs> is the uh, Josh Moore Destiny Gun of the Year. Uh, I think a fun thing we can do here is Mike is actually going to give... Uh, an actual uh, gun from Destiny, the Destiny Gun of the Year award, and Josh is going to give a uh, uh, a different one um, to give t to stall for Josh to have time for this. Oh, I, um, I've got it. Oh my! Can can you can you read it to us, please? Walk yeah. us through this. Would you Would you like to hear it? I would love to, please. It um, is the hashtag sponsored Fortin One. Zavala's Phallus Mark V20. I'm sorry. What, what's the roll on it? What, what are the, what are the perks? What, what do you got? Um, it's a bow. Okay. And a sniper yeah. rifle. Uh huh. Like and it, it has hip fire grip. Ah, yes. Okay. Truly. Right. Truly, a never a greater tragedy has been writ by man. Also, truly. cluster bombs. Oh, ooh, okay. Actually, hold on. <laughs> but you can only carry one ammo, and it costs you five dollars to follow it every time. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it costs you five <laughs> charges it. It's for balance reasons. Well, I can't wait for that gun to be in Destiny, Josh. Um, yeah, it's gonna be great. If I, uh, no. if every Mike time you fire it, you just hear Zavala going, "Guardian." <laughs> whether we like it or not whether we like it or not you've stepped into a war with a cabal um, my actual destiny gun of the year is going to be a uh, shout out to the Ikella shotgun Ray is a fool and has not seen the light of day it is the best boss melting gun in uh, destiny and it gets a special kind of shout out because it is a year one gun, technically. It's from Warmind, before Forsaken came out. And uh, it's still one of the best guns in the game. That's how good it is. You can't beat that. Other than, unless you're the Telesto, which is still the best, though. But that's a year one gun, so I forgot. <laughs> it's, it's fine. Um, congratulations to the Ikello shotgun. You are Mike's Josh Moore Destiny Gun of the Year. Um <clears throat> Our final superlative category, moving on, is going to be best moment or event. Uh, so either like a, your personal, like one of your, I guess like kind of a more uh, kind of chill category. Like what was your favorite moment in gaming? Either like something that happened where you were playing a game this year or like a larger event. So uh, I guess one of my favorites... Um, was uh, I guess I have a couple of them. Uh, first for me was um, when uh, Forsaken, like the watching the the teams in uh, Destiny do the uh, when Forsaken first came out and do the like raid, do, try and get the worlds first and the last raid and how crazy that race was. 
uh, and how like the the first team to get it like just barely scraped in with like a 22 hour finish, which is wild and crazy. And then it like canonically like changed the game when they first did it. So I thought that was like as someone who plays a lot of Destiny, I thought that was super cool to like watch and kind of be a part of and see who was like pulling apart a pulling ahead of who and who was like figuring out the encounters and stuff and seeing all that stuff. Plus, it's also a really great raid, and I th I think it's my favorite one in Destiny, like period. Um, so that it was re that was a really fun event. Uh, I think Ray and I probably also have this one. Um, which was uh, this year? I might upload the footage right here if I. I should still have it. Uh, I'm not sure if you're. I was going to mention Evo. Mm. What, what were you talking about? Were you talking about something different? I have the footage of that too. I was thinking about that one time. There was a bit of an ass beating going on in some DBFZ. And uh -huh. you threw out that Bardock fist out of oh, nowhere. Oh, shit. I forgot. Yeah, that was real good. Out of nowhere. And I dragon rushed into it like a... No, it, I super rushed into it like an idiot. And the way the cut just looks... And I'll upload it here. It just looks like Bardock just punches Vegeta square in the jaw. Stops Dude, it. Was, it was a <laughs> freaking like galaxy brain read on my part. Uh, I was all I, honestly like some of my fa I think it, we'll kind of get to it later, but like some of my favorite moments were like those really close matches we had in Dragon Ball. Like those are always super fun. Mm. Um, and there was another time when I uh, when like base Goku first came out and you threw a spirit bomb at me and I dodged it and I was like, oh my god, I dodged it. Uh, what do I do? And then I instant transmissioned right into the path of it. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> It was what just a really eat it in the face. It was just a real great roller coaster of emotion, <laughs> that uh, was really fun, uh, and kind of going off of Dragon Ball, um, I think another one of my favorite events this year was seeing the Dragon Ball uh, Evo Championship. Mm -hmm. uh, just, I mean, between the, like those matches between Sonic Box and Gooey were just, just incredible. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's like. It was such a great showcase for the game, and just seeing the level that they were playing at was so was so incredible. Also, Sonic Fox won um, on a gamepad, which means he's the hero of the proletariat. Um, yeah, wow. Yeah, he yeah. did. You remind, it was yeah, real you remind shit, me of that. Son. Wow. It was incredible. Yeah. Basic uh, PlayStation 4 controller. Mm. Nothing special. <laughs> just brought it. <laughs> just, mm. God, it was so good. Josh, do you have like a favorite gaming moment from the year? I do. Um, it was the Metroid Prime 4 reveal at E3 this year. Mm. <laughs> Wait. Wait. I. Oh. I like oh. it. Oh. No. Oh. But really, and this one is going to tug at your heartstrings a little bit. My actual favorite gaming moment of this year has been um, playing Pokemon Go with the now toddler Metroid and watching her at one point open the game, see a Pokemon, mm. tap the Pokemon, give it a berry, pick a Pokeball, throw the Pokeball, and catch the Pokemon. Aww. As As a dad... And as I'm a fine. gamer, I'm okay. There, there is very little that has made me just like freak out in a long time, and that was definitely uh, that was definitely up there, and probably my favorite gaming moment of 2018. So, uh, that's yeah. a good one. I'll, God, I'll, that's I'll, so wholesome and good. I'll let oh. y'all finish mm. chopping up your onions, and oh, then we can uh, we can move on. So yeah, I love the, it. the 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 wee the wee toddler Metroid playing Pokemon Go. I can dig it. Oh, also, um, you know, an even more wholesome gaming moment was when uh, um, Incineroar protected Isabel from being uh, Smash Bros. character number 69. Um, wow. Wow. I, I, it was a great sac It was a great noble sacrifice to protect the beautiful, innocent creature that is Isabel. With the way that Incineroar has BM built into every one of his moves, I think Incineroar deserves spot 69. 
That's an incinerar fan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on. I think okay. it's time. I think it's time for uh, starting off with Mike. Your top, your top five, but the first three of your top five games of the year. All right. Well, here we're gonna um, we are gonna run this down right quick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have a couple of honorable mentions I would like to very quickly hit. Go um, for it. Number one of those is Tetris Effect. It's a game I've recently been playing. I will probably talk more about it on a future episode. Um, uh, but it's like trippy VR Tetris, and it's real cool. Uh, I haven't played a ton of it yet, but I... Uh, I really like it because I was like, oh, this reminds me a lot of Rez. And then I realized that they just got the guy from Rez who made Rez. They're like, hey, go make a Tetris game. And I was like, oh, no wonder I like this so much. That sounds great. (laughs) Uh, My next honorable mention is Overcooked 2. Uh, My wife and I really like Overcooked um, 1. And Overcooked 2 was more of that. So that was always really fun to play. Uh, Next up was Red Dead. Uh, I have some qualms about that game. It's very pretty looking. Uh, I think some of the story and character work is very good. Um, but man, it ha- it's it been an up and down experience. Like it's just, it's, there are some parts of it that I really love, but just, just the, sh- the lock on flick up headshot shooting, like the Grand Theft Auto style controls in 2018 just feel 2019, excuse me, just feel mm-hmm. bad. It like if Rockstar goes back to that well again in the future, I'm they re- I like it's just it's something that they really need to like rethink just because it does not f- it just doesn't work like as a core gameplay at all. And it, it didn't help that like Red Dead One felt s- Red Dead One is snappier than Red Dead Two. And, like, the cover is, it's it just, yeah, just some of, like, the, a lot, I love the visuals and the the story and, like, this environment, but just some of the core gameplay just did, and mission design just really felt aged in a not fun way. Um, and my final honorable mention is a game I've talked an absolute crap ton about this year. Uh, if my game of the year was based on time I played something, this would be my game of the year. Uh, it is Destiny 2 Forsaken. Uh, I like the stuff that they've really transformed the game with, and I've spent a lot of time playing it. Uh, like I said, talked about a ton. Everyone already knows my <coughs> thoughts on it. Uh, and like I said, if it was just raw time I spent with the game this year, this would be my absolute game of the year. But now we are getting into the legitimate top five. Number five for me is a phone game that I... Not I not I don't call it this. It's what everyone calls it. Uh, it's called Donut County. It's a really great game about delivering uh, by uh, about delivering whole donuts to people. And by delivering donuts, I mean you play as a raccoon and you suck up people's trash and fuck up their shit, so you can steal their trash <laughs> and you're a raccoon. <laughs> and this game is on here for me just because it was a. Um, First of all, the music is wonderful. I think it's like it's an album that you can separate from the game entirely and absolutely enjoy. It's wonderful music on its own. Um, and the game is also just really funny. Like I feel like not like humor is something that is I feel like hard to do in games sometimes. But it had a kind of like it. I think like if we had a best character category, I think BK from this game would be like my best character i mean he's just kind of he's just like a personified raccoon in like the best way possible um and just like the other dialogue like some of the things they do with the animation and the writing are all just like really snappy and fun and i really really enjoyed it and thinks it deserves credit that was my number five uh number four i have dead cells which is just a uh 
Uh, kind of a 2D run-based platformer. Um, roughly kind of... I mean, it's kind of like a... It's like a run-based kind of Castlevania type thing. Uh, I like the... I really just like the core controls of it. just feels really good. Haven't gotten super duper duper deep into it, but uh, I've been playing it since it was in early access last year and just have really just enjoyed that game as like a... Uh, it just feels... In the way that Red Dead kind of feels uh, sluggish and kind of loosey-goosey sometimes, Dead Cells is super tight and um, it's just really fun to play because of that. Uh, and then for me, number three is Smash Bros. Ultimate. Um, I like it's uh, it's just more Smash Bros. But it's I mean all the music tracks, all the stages, all the characters. Uh, I loved the World of Light mode and kind of all the special designed fights that they had in there. I think they get really creative with some of the stages that they, that they do. Um, playing just one on ones is fun. Playing like kind of crazy brawl matches is fun. Did some online co op the other day with my brother. That was really rad and it was really fun to dunk on people and combo them uh, online. So I've I've uh, really enjoyed that and I think it's one of my fa I think I don't. I mean, I don't want to get into, like, the whole Melee versus everybody else debate about Smash Bros., but I think as, like, a total package, it's a v incredibly um, enjoyable. So those are kind of my top th uh, – the first couple of my top five. Josh, you want to run down your list? Yeah, so I don't really have a ton of um, honorable mentions just because given my – uh, situation I have not had nearly as much time to play games as I would like this year um, I will say one my, my main honorable mention goes to Pokemon Go um, it has definitely uh, re-entered my life this year especially getting a dog and walking it constantly it has been a nice little thing to do I, I have uh, really enjoyed the updates and the things that have happened to it in the um the, the last few years since its release, um, adding in some of the stuff, uh, the research, adding in the uh, updated trading, the trainer battles, uh, updated Pokemon, uh, a lot of the stuff around raiding that has been a lot of fun. Uh, even, even playing solo most of the time, um, I have quite enjoyed what they have done with that game and have been uh, playing a lot of that. Um, for me, in my... Number five spot is actually going to be a game of 2017, but a game that I have been playing a lot this year is Night in the Woods. Um, it, it follows some animal characters um, kind of going through the rot of a small town around the, uh, the post-high school graduate area. Um, you've got some folks in the town who... Did not move on to college. The main protagonist is somebody who went off to college but um, kind of failed out and came back home. Um, and, and it's just a, a very interesting deconstruction of the struggles of small town America um, with the economic changes of the world and, and, and how do these kids go beyond what their potential really is in that town. Um I have not finished the game, but it is definitely one I've enjoyed playing. The The chances I have to play a, a single-player story-placed game. Number... Oh, man. Number three for me is going to be Dragon Ball Fighter Z. I have hmm. a lot of love for that game. I think it is gorgeous. It is an incredible achievement that the, the Dragon Ball Fighter... Dr Dragon Ball fighting game that we have wanted for so long is here and looks the way it looks. The only reason it's so low on my list is really the fact that I'm not very good at fighting games and I don't have the time to devote to getting good at the fighting game. It's not something I can really see myself playing a lot on my own. I like playing a little bit with Mike and Ray and getting my butt kicked because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Uh, but it's just fighting games in general just are not really games that grab me to play on my own. So for that alone, and, and some of the stuff around characters being locked behind DLC, paid DLC, 
as, as somebody who just does not see investing any more dollars into that game, having a large portion of that game locked to me, frustrating. But again, not <clears throat> I can't knock it too much just because I'm not the target demographic for that kind of game. It's really fun, really beautiful. Just given the way I play fighting games, can't rank too high on my list. Which, to say now that I've had two games before this game now, um, really tells how begrudgingly I can't believe I'm about to put this, but Destiny Forsaken is number three on my list. Wait, I thought you said DBFZ was number three. No, DBFZ is number four. Oh, okay. Number three, okay. Destiny 2 Forsaken. Alright, I gotcha. Sorry. I've spent a lot of this year ragging on Activision and on mm. Destiny. <clears throat> and I still have a lot of problems with some of their business practices and some of the minute decisions that they've made about the game. But, that being said, mm. Big Forsaken butt. has reinvigorated my love of Destiny. They have done things around that game to freshen it up to make it exciting to play, um, added a lot of story content that matters, that is engaging, that is exciting. Um, they they have done things that originally turned me off around the loot that have made loot matter again as a player who was one who found the gear that I liked and just kept feeding it. It made me try new stuff, which at first I was pissed off about, but I have really enjoyed trying new weapons, new armor, new skills and abilities. Um, you know, them them kind of making good on eventually going back and saying, like, okay, if you don't have the, the stuff leading up to this, we will get you in so you can play everything um, at the same price rather than trying to add extra cost on that for you to get in. Um, and even with the, 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 the newest season pass saying that even if you don't buy the annual pass, you will still be able to gain the light level increases as they go. You know, I think those are those are decisions that have shown that, for the most part, you know, Activision and Bungie are listening to the community and, and taking that feedback in, and, and actually doing something with it. And just the the overhauls that they have made on that game have made a pretty good game even better. And I, I have to give it my number three spot. I just I didn't want to, but I had to. That raid is really fun. We should do it sometime. All right, Mike. Let's let's throw it back to you for for number two. Wait, okay. wait. Oh, oh, wait. wait. Whoop, whoop. I think Ray's gonna give his honorables. Yeah, I only have honorables since I can't really give like games of the year because it seems uh, conflict of in conflict of interest. That's it. But honorable mentions goes to um most interesting indie game that everyone should check out. Uh, the Messenger. If you're a fan of old school 2D platformers, and this one is a cross between Ninja Gaiden and Metroid, and it is a perfect cross between Ninja Gaiden and Metroid, I couldn't ask for a better type of game. Um, another game, it is most overlooked game based on another game, um, is Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. Oh shit, yeah, that game is really good. Oh man. I, it's one of the only games I completed four times. I have it down so I can just complete it sitting down. Like, once I just go through it, sit down for an hour, and just burst through that game. So fun. Great game. Um, That game had some bops, too. Oh, it's a Castlevania. It's got the same music artist that did uh, the other Castlevania games. She is talented. Mm. Uh, Dragon Ball Fighter Z is my game that exceeded and continues to exceed any expectation I've ever placed in a video game ever. Um, it is my overachiever of the year because when I first turned the game on, and I believe uh, Mike was there, and I think Josh was there, I was like, oh my gosh, this game looks at least okay. I turned it on, I started playing it. Just amazing. I, as someone that's been watching Dragon Ball Z since it came on Sunday on Fox at like 10 in the morning before I would like go to church this game transcends everything about the fandom of Dragon Ball Z all every single move is based on a character action that's happened at some point in the show 
Nothing is made up. Some of the moves are ripped straight from the manga, are ripped mm -hmm. straight from the anime, cell by cell, frame by frame, and I was geeking out some of them. My shout outs to Vegetto's uh, um, final Kamehameha were for a couple frames. You see Goku and then Vegeta and then Vegetto's face as they shout uh, final Kamehameha. Oh, Do not speak oh. that name in this house. Gets me hot and bothered. Mmm. Anyways, and finally, my disappointment of the year. I want to love this game. Is me. Every so... <laughs> no, I love you. Every time I go back to try to play this game, every single time, it hurts me. It pains me because I can't love it. it, it it's not a... It, it's got so many flaws. It's a banal game. It's a shame. It's Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Octopath Traveler. Ooh. I want to love Octopath Traveler. I'm trying. I have over 18 hours into it. And jo Josh will appreciate more this more than anyone else I know. Octopath Traveler was so boring to me, I went and I finally beat Final Fantasy VIII. <laughs> <laughs> I was playing Octopath Traveler, and I was so distraught with how much of a bore this game was. I was like, you know what? I'm I think I'm actually going to go for the Gunblade game. And one time Josh yelled at me. He's like, what are you doing playing that game? <laughs> While I wasn't... I, if I had if I'd have known... Oh my goodness. If I had known, that was why. Folks, you can't see this, but Josh is just... He's shaken to his core. <laughs> I'm shook. Final Fantasy, it, it has some issues, but I will say right now, on this podcast, Final Fantasy VIII is a better game than Octopath Traveler. Please don't tell me it's your game of the year. Final Fantasy VIII is my game of the year. <laughs> yes. Well, this has been Unscripted Gaming. This is our last podcast. We are canceled forever. <laughs> no, it's it's got issues. It, I, there were some parts of Final Fantasy I legitimately hated. Anyways, um, Mike, you have your two top games. Yes. 2018. Uh, brief aside, um, just received a telegram here. Oh, this uh, just in. Oh, oh. Uh, the communique from um, uh, Sarah, the uh, designator of the um, <laughs> official Sarah of the Sarah Award of Is This Game Better Than Super Mario Odyssey uh, Award. Um, I asked her about this when I got up earlier, and she couldn't decide between whether or not Super Mario Odyssey still held this title uh, compared to Destiny, because uh, Sarah really got into Destiny this year and uh, really oh, enjoys it. Um, and it play, plays a plays it a bit. So, uh, but she couldn't decide if it was ultimately better than Super Mario Odyssey. So, uh, that is the dispatch at this time. If there's an update to that, uh, I will sure, be sure to uh, relay that communicate to everyone. Okay. Keep Anyways. us posted. Yes. Yeah, so my number two game of the year is Into the Breach. Mm. And I really liked this game because, well, one, it has mechs, uh, which mm -hmm. is cool. Uh, it's from Subset Games. And I really liked FTL. I loved FTL and I uh, their previous game. And when I first saw some of the stuff, of saw kind of what Into the Breach uh, was, um, kind of what the deal was. I wasn't sure if I was going to like it. I mean, it was such a radical departure from... FTL, but I think it's also a, I think it is a much better game. Well, it's a very different game than FTL, but I think it's also a better game because it's, FTL is kind of notorious for being just giving you, oh, hey, you have a 50-50 chance. If you pick the wrong one, you're going to be screwed over. Have fun. And the thing I really like about Into the Breach is that it's like a kind of a three, you have three units. It's like a kind of a strategy puzzle game and it gives you perfect information so mm -hmm. you always know like okay this is exactly what's going to happen in what order it's going to happen um and and you know you you know that it's that this person's going to attack for this much damage in this area and you guys can move this far and, and just having all of that perfect information lets them create kind of turns where things get really dicey and you have to like sit there and 
think about kind of go over a turn and be like, oh man, is there and like it feels so good when you look at a situation that you like when you're on the brink of like losing that timeline, which is what you call mm-hmm. a run. Um, and you're like, I don't think I can do it. I'm not going to be able to make it. But you like, so just before you execute the plan, you figure out one thing you can do differently that completely like saves you. It is so satisfying to kind of just get by on the skin of your teeth. Um, I also love the, I mean, the score is one of my favorite soundtracks from the year. Um, like it's kind of this, it's really, it's not like oppressively dark, but it's moody. And it kind of like, it sets the tone of like, there's not like a ton of narrative in the game, but I, I, I feel like that they do a lot of work around with the music and the, like the little bits of dialogue to imply a lot of the story in my head. That makes sense of just like these people jumping into like timeline to timeline to do the same thing over and over again and like how that wears them down and what that says and but yeah overall I've really I I think what really pushed this game up my list is when I got it on the Switch because it's the perfect like travel game. Wait, wait, it's on Switch now? It is, and it's a great version of it. Oh, uh, you shouldn't have told me that. It's oh no. Yeah. I'm oh. sorry. It's, it's oh, so no. good, Ray. Do it. Do it again. It's the, I already have. I don't want to double dip. I already double dip. It's great. That's why I love it so much. Um, I but yeah, I it's I like I said. I like I love the kind of perfect and because it just takes out like all the shitty randomness of like XCOM, and just kind of <laughs> in, uh, so it's there's no like oh 98 percent to hit. You'll barely do it. Oopsie. <laughs> Like, there's nothing like that. Like, it's just, this like, is... It, nothing is guaranteed in life. <laughs> no, but XCOM is ridiculous. <laughs> XCOM is nuts. I'm sure you've seen that picture of it says, like, 40% to hit, and, like, the shotgun model is inside the alien's head. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, like, Into the Breach doesn't have any of that. But it trades that off by giving you, like tougher to navigate scenarios because it's also you're not just like thinking about like the immediate battle you're like okay the only way i can get out of this level is if i let two of these cities get blown up and what that and how that kind of damages like the overall your overall like match to match health and if that hits zero you lose the whole kind of game um but it's kind of like you're kind of in in between those immediate tactical fights, you're also trying to plan out like the short term and long term benefits. It's like oh, if I lose this fight now, I'll still be able to try and get this bonus thing. Like just stuff like that is is really cool and just it's why I, I loved it so much and why it's my number two for the year. Huh? Josh, go. Neat. For me, number two is going to be Spider Man. Um, you know, this, this is something that I really wasn't planning on and just kind of the Black Friday deals kind of came around and was like, Hey, 200 bucks for a console and a game. That's, that's a steal. Mm. 120 bucks for a console and 60 bucks for a basically brand new title. Sign me up. Um, yeah, I played a little bit of the Spider-Man 2 uh, PlayStation 2 game that kind of everybody holds up as the Spider-Man game that has... If, uh, if we had if we had unscripted gaming back in 2004, the uh, pizza delivery music in that game would have been the hardest spot for sure. Continue. Yes, and and, <laughs> and when we eventually do the, the Creed Got Robbed segment of playing video games based on movies, that will be the first one that we do, obviously. Um... <laughs> But, you know, this is kind of the the spiritual successor to that in terms of the mechanics of the game and being being just Spider-Man swinging around New York City. Um, and I think they do some really cool things with this game as far as getting you into the game and, and trusting that you have some understanding of who Spider-Man is how he got to be the way that he is. 
um, and tack tackling some really interesting social issues along the way. So you, you enter as Peter Parker basically having been Spider-Man for the last seven years. So we don't have to go through the, the whole you know, Uncle Ben sequence. You know, he's been doing this for a long time. You know, him and Mary Jane have, have had their ups and downs, and, and they're on a down right now. You know, she's around, but the, he, Peter Parker has been doing the Spider-Man thing and, and obviously does not really have time for a real relationship. So, um, she, you know, she they're, they're not together. Um, they, you know, they, they do some interesting stuff with kind of opening with characters who... They just kind of, you know, they let you assume that he has been dealing with this person for his entirety of being Spider-Man and just saying, like, we've been we've been at this for a long time. Like, aren't you sick of this back and forth? Like, let's just let's just end it already. Um, but but beyond just like the the very interesting story aspects of Spider-Man is kind of aiding the surveillance state of New York City by going cop. around putting all of these surveillance stations back online um, or how J. Jonas Jameson is basically an Alex Jones style podcaster ranting about the evils of Spider-Man and how he's actually bringing down the society um, you know just being in that world is incredibly um, engaging and exciting you know it's one of those games that even as my gaming has changed in the last couple of years, becoming a father and, and having limited time, um, trying to stay more focused. I find myself just getting lost in tracking every little icon down because I just want to spend time fighting crime and exploring that city. Uh, it, it's It's been a... I've, I'm not as far as I'd like to be in that game, obviously. I've only had it for a couple of weeks now, but I have really enjoyed it and has really... Um, attached itself to me and really charmed me in a way that uh i was not expecting so that's why it's uh, at my number two very cool um oh uh, well mike's number one it's a game we've uh talked about a couple times here but it's uh you know i'm a man of my word when i make uh <laughs> far too early declarations about something uh, I stick to my guns because whoosh, that's who I is. Are you the gunslinger? No. Um, my game of the year is Dragon Ball Fighters. It's uh, as I predicted back in like January of last year. Like, oh, it's super cool that they released the game of the year in March. Um, <laughs> and they did. And it, it's a lot of things for me. It's like, it's how faithfully, how like, all the work that went into just creating the pitch perfect renditions of the like the character art and move sets and stuff from the show into the game um i have never really been uh i had never it's this is kind of like my first arxis or like mar kind of marvel ish versus like capcom ish kind of game and i've really enjoyed like just the core gameplay of it and uh, doing um, and kind of figuring out teams that way and kind of getting into the deeper elements of like figuring out teams that work and learning tricky changeups that Ray can't read because I keep doing the same thing as Broly. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I just, I've loved all, I, I love the soundtrack. I think it is a super energetic and fun. Um, psst, psst, Mike, mm -hmm. Mike, XXX, mm -hmm. down B. Stop. A. No. Mm -mm. No. Nope. Please don't. No. Nope. No. Nope. Nope. Next. Stop. 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 Quarter circle Stop. super. No. No. <laughs> Quarter circle X. B. <laughs> Quarter circle X. B. Everyone remember, Broly's level three hits on down. Don't you ever down. forget it. Don't you ever forget that. H O D baby. If we ever start like a fighting game series, uh, where you and I play fighting games, which is what I think some we should do sometime, we're either mm -hmm. going to call it "Hits on Down" or "Clashing Normals." Um, Clashing Normals sounds pretty, pre pretty badass. Not gonna lie, because 
that's another reason why it's my game of the year is because like we've had it we like we're just doing those fights and we've had a couple of times where we've had clashing normals and it's the most hype thing it's so mm -hmm. good like if it's oh, i just adore that game and i like i've been playing a lot of other stuff like a lot of destiny i've been playing jumping around trying to like doing a lot out there like kind of follow up on get other titles for game of the year and stuff um I'm really looking forward to like seeing what the season two uh, characters we get are. I loved all the, the additions for season one, um, but yeah, overall, just it's a blast to play. I love the music, love the art, and it's uh, made me better at fighting games. And I'm just really excited to play more of that game. And uh, gentlemen, I think that just about wraps it up. No, no, Josh is number one. Oh, well, sugar. I'm sorry. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Joshua, what's your number one? Oh, I was an accident. I'm sorry. Yeah, you don't see it, but Josh is flipping just them the bird. Off. <laughs> um, for me, it's simple. It's Smash mm. Brothers. I mean, all right, all right. I do have some legitimate problems with that game. <laughs> really? But mainly, the character unlock Fuck. is. You don't get no argument. There's no argument here. I'm sorry. It's, nope. It's I'm rough. Decent now. You're, you're on your own, sucker, right? This is again. It's just like you used to, Ray. You love to do this, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is one of those examples of Nintendo. Just mm. again, not mm. willingly choosing not to understand what people want. <laughs> they get. They get oh so close, and then Waluigi. make a decision Sorry, because what? they just seem to want to do their own thing. Because yeah. fuck the gamers. Um, uh, uh, yes, but all Ooh, that aside, spicy. Smash Brothers Ultimate fucking slaps. Especially mm. somebody who did not have Smash 4, I have very much enjoyed getting back into Smash Brothers, playing new characters, seeing all the environments. Just, oh, man. I can't say much more that, about that game that hasn't already been said. It's just, it's just, it's good to be home. That's all I'll say. It's good to be home. Except for Waluigi. <clears throat> Our sweet prince will never be free. I'm appreciating that both of you guys' picks for Game of the Year is both a fighting game. I'm just throwing that out there. Only one As of them a was a fighting game. The other one was a party game. I just I just refuse to hear that anymore in my lifetime that Smash Brothers isn't a fighting game. I will argue, not right now, but I will say, and I said this at work today, Smash Brothers is more of a fighting game than Mortal Kombat X. Bring it, haters. Bring it. <laughs> Come to the table. Tetris is Let's a better go. racing game than any Gran Turismo. Fight me. Ooh, ooh, Actually, no, don't. I, I made that. You're, you're on your own don't there. Don't no, wait, please, not the face. Oh. <laughs> I'm leaving you on that one. Woo. Gentlemen, that's it. That's 2018. We did it. We did 2018 it. was a hell year for everything, but an it's okay year bag. for games. It is in the bag. Uh, thank you, Felix. That's, That's our right, signal. <coughs> yeah, I think that's Felix. gonna. What was Felix's gonna... game of the year? Was it Walk? I bet it was. Why would you say that out loud? You, you're you're a jerk. You're a lot of things right now. You're a jerk. Are you gonna say D E R A T? Watching unscripted gaming. I, I just, I tried to segue into the outro, and I'm so upset. Just, you know, again, if you liked everything except Mike at the end, make sure you follow us here on YouTube at Unscripted G Podcast. Get us on Facebook at Unscripted Gaming. Follow us on Twitter at Unscript underscore gaming. Get us on SoundCloud at SoundCloud dot, SoundCloud.com slash Unscripted dash gaming. Get us on Apple, Google, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Pocket Cast. Anywhere you get your podcast, get us in your ears, put us on your eyes at YouTube, chat with us, 
we are excited about a, a brand new series of podcasts coming in 2019. So thank you for listening, and uh, we'll see you next year for Unscripted Gaming. This is Josh. This is Mike. And I'm Ray. Peace. <laughs>